Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's Caternix Corner Live. We have a great show lined up for you tonight. Um, our special guest is William Carl Foster, um, and he will be joining us in a little bit. And we're going to be talking about uh, uh, Caternix colors that breed true. Um, we're also going to be having a Q&A session uh, later on in the show. Uh, the show runs so around 8 o'clock, so if you could uh, do me a favor, get your questions in early so we can uh, try to get all the questions in before the end of the night. And also, if you do me a favor and type the letter Q in front of your question, that just helps me distinguish the questions from the comments and makes it uh, a little bit easier, you know, things go a little bit smoother doing that. Uh, we are going to be giving away a uh, Caternix Corner Tumblr um, to the person who asked the most engaging question of the night for our guest, and we will announce the uh, uh, the winner of that Tumblr at the end of tonight's broadcast. Um, these Tumblrs are available if you want to purchase them. They're available on CaternixCorner.com. Um, they're $35 a piece. The tumblers are made by my sister, who is sitting next to me tonight. She wanted to come on and say hello to you guys. So, Hi. Um, she's down visiting from Michigan, and uh, she's just going to sit in for a few minutes. They're going to be taking off heading out tonight to have fun while I stay home and work. So, um, But anyhow, um, also, my sister does custom tumblers. Um, I just put a few on screen. She can do pretty much any design you want, whether it's a photo or, you know, some type of an image. So I know not everybody wants a Caternix Corner live uh, Tumblr, but if you do want one, say, for your business or, you know, a picture of your kids or whatever, she can do that. So if you guys want, you know, to, to do something like that, um, get a hold of me at Terry at CaternixCorner.com or through the, uh, the uh, Facebook page. Uh, group page and I'll get you set up with my sister and you guys can and work it out from there. Um, also tonight our moderator is Verna Young. She'll be keeping track of things in the chat room. Um, thank you very much Verna. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, that's about it for the announcement guys. So let's go ahead and get things started uh, and bring William <coughs> here and we'll get rolling. You may roll. <laughs> my sister's going to take off. So. William, welcome to the show. Thanks, Terry. You got you got good audio on me now. Yep, sure do. All right, great. Um, I don't see anything in the uh, comments saying uh, about the audio. Uh, William, before we go into the uh, um, the Caternix mm -hmm. Corner colors, um, can you kind of give somebody some people the update on the worldwide online Caternix show? Tell us a little bit about that and how they go about getting into it and whatnot. Yeah, I thought it'd just be a neat project. It's a worldwide online Caternix show. <clears throat> you got to join the group, and it's free to enter. We're trying to give prizes away all summer long. Mm -hmm. I just like looking at pictures of birds, and I just figured it'd be pretty neat for everybody to do. It's categorized by genetics, except for the blue and the silver mixed and the reds are mixed. Sure. So what do they need to do to um, just join the Facebook group page and upload their Join page? the page. There's, yeah, there's instructions on there. Need one, it shows their feet. And another one overhead with the feathers, you know, the wings spread out. That way you can see the plumage. But pretty much that's it. It's pretty simple. Gotcha. I'm not very good at it. Y'all know, so. <laughs> yeah, who is? Um, okay, if anybody has any questions about that, uh, the online Caternix uh, show, <clears throat> go ahead and post that in the comments and uh, we'll try to get them in uh, just as quick as we can. Um, okay, uh, like I said earlier, tonight's topic is going to be about uh, Caternix Corner or Caternix Corner, Caternix Quail colors that breed true. Um, can you give us a little um, insight, William, to. Uh, not not only the colors that breed true, but how you how you know what colors can breed true and what which ones can't. You know, as far as because I, I know a lot of people like they'll order a certain type of uh, quail and they breed them, they get eggs from them, they hatch them out, and they get several different colors. What's the difference between right. that and the ones that are breeding true? 
Uh, the ones that's mixed where you get a bunch of different collars are mixed genetics. They're not pure lines. It's not a pure, it's a pure breed, but it's not a pure variety. <clears throat> you should, if you order wild type, you should get wild type. If you order Italian, you should hatch all Italian. You're going to have to have Manchurians with wild type to get all Italian. Okay. A lot of people, I believe, will put whites in there. You know, that'll give you more with the tuxedos. Put your Tibetans with your Rosetta. So you get Tibetans and Rosettas and Pharaohs. And that way they get a better selection. But <clears throat> if you order a specific variety, that's what you should hatch. Mm -hmm. Unless it's otherwise noted, in my opinion. Right. Okay. Um, I got a bunch of pictures that you sent me. I am going to go ahead and bring them up. And if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about each variety and uh, how they got that variety and what makes them breed true. Yeah, I, the English white was one of the first, I think, what, there's five five varieties that right is imported to the U.S. to start with. Manchurian, English white, wild type, Tibetan. I was thinking there's, that was one of them. It should be true every time unless it's got something mixed in. The other one on there is Sandy. That's from Australia. That's a feral based Sandy where they'll they'll breed true as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're when I saw that photo, I thought that was a, a rude dilute at first. Uh, I I think there's a cross you can make it'll make them almost look like the Sandy. Right. But yeah, that's not this case here. So, so what are they breeding to get the Sandys? It's just a Sandy. It's a gene. It's a specific gene, like oh, the okay. English whites. It's a specific one. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Like the a specific one. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Here you got the white winged pie, then a pansy or a rock cough. The uh, the bigger picture of the white winged pie. That's a Tibetan white winged pie, and the chicks a wild type or a wild white wing let me see if that's i can move that do. image out of the way a minute there you go that's what look like it's a chick versus an adult gotcha that looks pretty cool and the the pansy yep. rock rock cough i can never say that right or the redhead yeah is did that come no, from the uh did that come from the manchurian by any chance did no, that come out of a, that? that's a German. That's, they've got them in Germany. I think Canada, they're pretty well known in Canada. There's a lot of them there. They call them redhead. Okay. But we've had them pansies. That they've been in the United States for over five, I think it's five years I've seen. I went back through online. I believe the woman's in West Virginia. That I first noticed that anybody posted online to have them. Mm -hmm. But I think most of them are all mixed up we've got here mm -hmm. now. Okay. Calico, that'll hatch 100% true. There's light calico, dark calico. If you cross that bird back to a wild type, it'll be a hetero, which to me is a little bit better looking bird. They won't hatch true, but in homo form, which is two copies, they will. Okay. Same way with the sparkling. That's a homo there. <clears throat> two okay. copies. Can, real quick, can you do a, a rundown on the, the uh, heterozygous and the homozygous? What exactly that means? I know there's a lot of people out there that really don't understand that. I really don't know how to explain it. The hetero is one, like he is one. Homo, a hoe is more than one. That is two. That's how I try to remember. It's kind okay. of one trash way to remember. That's how I remember. You know, it's just one copy versus two. Like if you cross a fee to a wild type, your first five fee is not going to be quite as black and white as if you cross it again. The first cross of the E hetero and second the whole homo. Okay. All right. Two of my favorites here. Egyptian and red ring. <clears throat> yeah, pure red. They should hatch 100% true every time. Okay. Bob Fee and the Graf Fee. The Graf Fee's got to be homozygous for E and Tibetan hatch 100% true every time they have that kind of bird. Otherwise, it'll have the pinning, like the bob fee's got the white yep. feathers on there. They call that a pinning or a striding. In a hetero, 
which would be a rosetta to a fee, you'll have that striding, which some thinks a much better looking bird. Mm -hmm. Cool. <clears throat> a golden man spread. And then the Tibetan, the same way. A lot of people mistake Tibetan and Rosetta. They'll have trouble. Where the fob fee had the white lines, if you remember that, a Rosetta had the white lines on the Tibetan base. Oh, okay. Makes sense. That's the easiest way to remember. Okay. For me. Pearl fee a wild type of barrel. A lot of people get different colors. They'll get browns, pong, which is Italian, mm -hmm. whites, which you buy barrel or wild type. Nearly almost always should get pure wild type, 100%, if they're bred right, in my opinion. <clears throat> right. Now, what's the, what's the difference between the, the pearl fee and the uh, the snowies? Because I, I get those two confused quite a bit. I, I'm not I don't know how you talk about Zach Snowy's. I think he uses the German pastels or SSCs. I think they've got the silver in them, I believe. Okay. If I remember right, right. silver. Yeah. Or, I mean, I've never tested them out or nothing. Right. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I, I got them. I look at them. They, they all look the same to me. So, okay. I think um, you had one. Go ahead, William. I uh, say so I think you has one. You call a snowy for me. I'd use the silver in that cross. Mm -hmm. I remember right. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I hope that helped you guys a little bit with knowing. Is that all the colors that breed true, or are there more? And we just didn't have the images. There, there's more. I didn't have all the fish. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm so sure I tried to list. Them. Is there any way to figure out which ones will breed true, or is it? Short of test breeding, I mean, there's a lot of stuff online you can read, but I prefer to read what everybody says and then make that cross to confirm it to make sure that's true. Gotcha. gotcha. That's really the only way. Okay, I am going to, uh, I see we got a bunch of questions coming in already, so let's go ahead and... Uh, Actually, I think we're just going to start right at the top because we've got a lot of people. I'm going to go ahead and just say hi to everyone. Uh, the farm kids say hi. Uh, Verna says evening, everyone. Sarah says hello. Uh, Beyond the Border says good evening from Mexico. Great to be here. Welcome to the uh, show. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nick says hello everyone tuning in from Evans Colorado hope you are having a wonderful evening we are thank you Nick Nick was our uh, winner of uh, Turnix Corner Cup a couple shows ago I believe LJT Many Homestead says hi from Connecticut Nick James says hello Robert Halverson says hi from Minnesota Doug Baum is North Carolina Sarah M.G. Reads, I'm in Canada, just hatched my first quail yesterday. Congratulations, Sarah, and welcome to the show. And why is my name on there and yours isn't? I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, the Farm Kids say hi from Minnesota. Quail Ma'am says, hey, y'all. J. Cole, hi from Texas. Uh, Brenton Cox, hi from Brisbane, Quail, Australia, Brenton. Tina Price is from Central Missouri. Uh, Nikki James coming in from Missouri also. Just have hatched my first batch of eggs in the incubator right now. That's great. Uh, Brad Davis says hello from New York. Uh, Nick says great job on the tumblers. They work great. Thanks, Nick. I'm glad you are enjoying it. Yeah, I, I have one in my hand pretty much every day. You forgot to tell them that price includes shipping. That price includes shipping. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, let's see. The farm kids. Here's a question. How can you tell when your eggs are fertile, and how can you tell if they are developing? Go ahead, William. Do you want me to? Sure, I do. For, I we crack ours every Saturday night. We crack open a bunch of eggs and check for fertility, look for the blast of term. Now developing, you'd have to candle them. Mm -hmm. I don't candle eggs. Right. I would want to try to 
explain that. Yeah, I candle usually right before I go into lockdown. I'll real quick run through a bunch of eggs just to make sure I don't have a bunch of duds in there. But uh, I used to, but I don't. All right. <coughs> well, you, you probably do incubate a lot more eggs than I do. Uh, Klaus M says hello everyone. Hi, scary Verna's eye. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but okay. Uh, let's see. LJT Mini Ho says Verna's sweet. Yep, Verna is. Uh, Tina Price says, can you tell the difference between male and female at one week? No, nah, very often. Just on the sex links. It's on the sex links. Yeah. You can tell me, Dave. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't tell on anything else. But on the sex links, I can tell from day one. <laughs> yeah, there's some you can, but for the most part, I just the answer would be no. Really. Right. Uh, Quail Ma'am says Williams eggs are the best. Uh, William, how long is it going to be before you're uh, back into shipping again? I started shipping a few yesterday. Did you? Good. Katrina not... says. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, William. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> last year. I made it a job. I'm not too worried about selling eggs this year, to be honest. But I'd rather do some giveaways. People want some, you know, I'll sell a few, but right. I want to spend time with my family, especially the health issues. My wife and my dad sure. just went through that. Can't, uh, can't blame of... you. All right, Actually, Trina we give, says. Uh, we'll give a, we can give five boxes of eggs away tonight if you want. Start shipping next week. Five boxes? All right, people. 36. Is that all right to you? It's fine with me. If you want to give away five boxes. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, what are we going to do to pick up five boxes of eggs? What do these people need to do to win, a, win some eggs? Don't matter. Whatever you want. Pick, pick the top five questions. You guys better get your questions in here. <clears throat> um, are they going to be a 30 count of mixed? Yeah, 36. Okay. Um, I can go back through and write everybody's name down in comments and just draw five names out and then post on the link afterwards if you want. If it's easier for you. That's fine. If you want to start writing stuff down, it's going to... It won't disappear. It'll be on Facebook when we're done, won't it? Yeah, but we'll, we won't be able to announce them tonight after the broadcast. We'll have to announce it tomorrow. Well, I'll let you pick five. I'll let you pick five. How's that? Oh, Sure, I, I don't have a pencil. You're going to have to pick five. I didn't bring a pencil with me. <laughs> I'll, have to up. Yep. I'll be right back. I can still hear you. Okay. William is going to select five of his favorite questions of the night. So, guys, if you want to win a 36 count of William's mixed hatching eggs, uh, get your questions in. Um, and he is going to select uh, the winners. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the next question. Uh, Katrina says, to me, color breeding may indicate some inbreeding. Have you observed any negative characteristics or differences between them and the wild type? No. No. I'm trying to read on here what it says. No, if you use clan breeding, I always want to say pyramid, but that's not right either, but Mm -hmm. Well, you got three or more cages of birds, you should have no problem with inbreeding. A lot of people say, I breed out of this, so I don't inbreed. I think that's just kind of an excuse to have mixed up birds, maybe. Or it, it, it's easier to do it that way, too, as well, I guess. Right. Okay. Uh, Kevin Hoffman says, hi, y'all. Uh, Nick says, do you have a quail genetics chart? Or do you know if such a chart exists? I'm trying to learn as much about genetics as well as as well I can, so I can establish my own breeding programs with my flock. About oh, genetics as uh, well as I can. Okay. No, really I don't genetic, Not a chart. There's a lot if you Google online. The genetics page on Facebook. Uh, Tamara Roswell in Australia, Camilla Quail. She's got a really nice website. Talks about a bunch of different things on genetics. Adam Greaves has got a Stony Brook quail. His Facebook page 
he's got some on there. Beautiful comparison picks, probably as good as what I've ever seen. Cool. I believe Michael Rose, I don't know if he's got his poster or not. He's got some a genetics page for his website as well. Cool. But I don't. Right. Yeah, I don't know enough about genetics to put anything out there. I can barely cover the basics. So, uh, Quail Bam says, if you breed a brown, yellow, black, sparkly to a black and white sparkly, what will you get? An egg. No, I'm kidding. I'd say you're going to end up with a black and white. It may have a little bit of brown in it to start with. But it sounds like you're breeding a feed on a dowling problem. Uh, hey Jones says hi Terry and William checking in from northeast tip of Ohio hello and welcome to the show uh, Robert Halverson says I have celadons how many generations of breeding would it take to get birds to breed close to true so far I have several different colors like the tuxedos <clears throat> I would think two crosses you should have it but it just depends what you're starting with, whether they've got one copy or two copies. They should breed true if you got two copies to start, but if they only got one, you're going to breed them two more times and hope for the best. Gotcha. I think there's more to sell it on than just a simple recessive. Everybody says it's just a simple recessive. Uh, I don't believe that. Right. Okay, Outdoors with Tim says, hey, I'm a new quail farmer. Congratulations. Um, his next comment is, your channel has inspired me to start farming quail. Well, great. I'm glad the channel helped out. Um, let's see. Outdoors with Tim is watching from South Carolina. Dave Wellington, hi from Virginia. Um, let's see. Brantley is from Northeast Oklahoma. <clears throat> Sean Eden says, wondering how big I could get them if I bred them for five years or more. No idea, to be honest. That's you have to be an I, awful I, lot of selective breeding. Yeah, the uh, the biggest excuse in the U.S. I believe is leg issues on not getting the larger birds. Okay. Where I seen Brent, he was on there and commented from Australia. They've got birds over 500 grams. I mean, I, I think selective breeding and the right genetics is quite possible. Right. But I don't know if you're really going to get, you know, five is pretty. That's quite a large quail. In my opinion. Okay, Thomas Greenaway says hi from Wales in the UK. Hello. Uh, Blue Donkey reports Terry, does inside or outside raising make a difference if the outside cages are weather and predator safe? Um, I haven't seen any difference. I mean, I really don't raise them outside. All my grow outs go out there uh, for meat pen birds. Um, but no, if, you, if your cages are set up for weather, I don't see why it would be an issue. Are yours indoors or outdoors, William? Mine's indoors. <clears throat> I've had them both though before, and I'm not sure if outdoors. Well, I don't know what. I think they make them a happier bird. If that sounds funny or not? You know, they're more content. Sure. Like in an avi, I believe in an aviary, you would have better luck. You'll see more birds go broody and stuff. So, right. I would think outdoors may be best, really, to be honest. If you're not mass producing eggs right. and birds. Uh, Bruce says, can you tell me what you think about the blue eggers? Small birds for the most part. Just an ornamental egg. I mean, they, they was a big thing at one time. I spent a lot of money on them when they first come out. But mm. yeah, it's just, it's an ornamental. It's each their own. Okay. Uh, Klaus M says, is there any way to see the difference on first day chicks as normally colored or sparkly? I have rosettas. Rue, Sparkly, Pharaoh Hen, and I have a Rosetta Chick colored differently, darker slash lighter markings. Uh, that's probably trying to recall this way. I think you said you had Rosetta and a Pharaoh, and I think you're just seeing the difference in your Rosettas and your Pharaohs. Mm -hmm. They say a lot of the Sparkly Chicks will have white dots right up on top of their heads, but I've, I can't say because I don't pay a lot of attention. I let them feather out. Okay, he says, also, do they have dark gray like the Tibetans? Uh, dark feet like the Tibetans, not gray. <laughs> no, not, not all of them. Yeah. No. 
uh, raw outdoor, feet. <laughs> outdoors with Tim <clears throat> says he'll take a box of eggs. <laughs> Nick says, "Sign me up." You guys got to ask questions. If, you, if we got to, we got some. Uh, we need some interesting questions if you want to be uh, selected to uh, receive the eggs and or the uh, Paternix Corner tumbler. I'd be uh, up for that tumbler. Yeah, well, I've got quite a few of them now. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Outdoors with Tim says, "How can I keep my females from having thin eggshells?" a calcium problem I'd say and I've noticed if they run out of water it'll get like that too oh okay never knew that Amber says I'm thinking about feeding my pets a raw diet can cats eat quail outside cats can I know that I don't yeah. know about a, <laughs> I don't know if I feed my pet cat quail I don't really know the answer to that question but our outside cats they eat quite a few quail with no issue Right. But if you've been a cat that's a pet, don't take my word for that because I don't want responsible for nothing. Exactly. So I don't know. Uh, what came first, the quail or the egg? Hmm. The egg at my place. Yep. What's the genetics of the Italians? Fawn base. Okay. Manchurian crop of wild type. Fawn gene. How long do quail live? Till freezer camp day. No, I've heard people have them as long as four, five, six years. You know, most wow. of them. Oh, within a year for breeders. You know, there's people that's got pets. Actually, I think it was Tamara again that had one. She'd retired. It was a few years old. I was really surprised. She just oh, posted yeah. the other day. Yeah, mine but never make it past a year. <laughs> yeah, mine. Let's uh, see, Adirondack Quail Farm says, uh, I have mixed colors. How do I get red tuxedos? Hopefully you've got red, <clears throat> red range and whites. If not, any of your red birds, put them with some white birds, hope for the best. Right. Well, I don't know what you have, so I can't really answer that. Okay, Sarah says, how reliably can you tell what color a chick will grow up to be? For example, I have some yellow ones with gray dots on them. Will I be able to tell what they will be? Gray dots? No. <clears throat> I, you'd have to know where they came from, probably. I mean, I could look at some of mine, the coloring, and know what cage they come from or what they are, but gray could be a numerous. You could have, there's blue, Andalusian, silver, sandies. I mean, there's too many for me to be able to tell you. Right. I believe uh, Nicole Winkles has on her website, she's got chicks versus adults. May try that Essex County quail. Well, she's got a thing on hers. <clears throat> it's got chicks poke. That's the only one I can think of your resource for that. Thomas Greenway wants to know why his boy quail are mating with each other. <laughs> They're excited. It's that, it's that time of year. The lights are, the light, daylight's <laughs> getting longer and they're getting ready to, to find some females. Uh, Jamel Campbell says, can you breed only, wait a minute, can you only breed Manchurians together to only get Manchurians, and will there be a problem breeding only Manchurians, or do you have to breed Manchurians to Italians? Manchurian to Manchurian is Manchurians. Manchurians to Italians, you'll get more than just Manchurian. If I wanted Manchurians, I'd keep my Manchurians together and have three separate cages of them, and clan right. breed. Oh, spiral breed. All right, Quail Ma'am says, I have what I believe to be a heterozygous Celadon silver white wing pied. She's gradually turning white with each molt. How common is this? Let me get that logo out of the way again. She may. Uh, <clears throat> sounds more like a lavender Andalusian pied. I don't know if I, that I've ever seen any silver white wing pied. But if it's Every mold, if they turn more white, that's the progressive pod, like Diana Davies got. Or she specializes in it. Not very common for the most part. 
Okay, Nicole says, I just got jumbo white wing pharaohs. Will I end up with a lot of different types when I start hatching their eggs? No idea. I don't know where you got them exactly. from. Exactly. It's going to depend on where you got them and what their background is. Uh, Jeff Fortune says, what's the genetics of Italian birds? Pollen. We answered that one, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> it's a fawn gene. Manchurian across to a wild type will give you the Italian. Okay. Larry Fence says, be, um, Go ahead. No, I was, there should be all kinds of Italian. It should be what we had here prior, what was imported from Canada, what was imported from Germany, and there's a few more in here now. I mean, there should be, I know there's at least five genetic lines of Italian to the United States right now. So there's no reason that Manchurian Italians shouldn't be able to hatch whatever you want at all along. Right. Okay, uh, Larry says, I'm new to breeding. I'm hope open to some eggs. How do you know, how do you know temps when you get three or four different numbers from four different thermometers? Hmm. Need to get you some more that? accurate thermometers. <laughs> <clears throat> I forget, you need to calibrate just uh, calibrate a thermometer, go on Terry's Attorney's Corner Facebook page and use the search and put calibrate thermometer at the top. You should be able to find it. Mm -hmm. If not, check a few of the other groups. Use that search button and it should tell you how to do it. Or you may be able to just Google. That way you know your thermometer is set right. Right. Yeah, if you got four of them, you're getting four different readings, something's not quite right. Uh, Leanne says, or Leanna says, how. How to get all the eggs the same size? I'm from Trinidad. Oh, welcome, Trinidad. I don't know if you can get them all the same size, but if you selectively breed, you get most of them. Right. <clears throat> Let's see. Hope Jackson says, I'm new to quail. I'm trying to understand breeding different colors. Are there colors we should never breed together? Uh. You'll hear silver to silver, never breed them together. But I, my answer is no. Okay, um, digital and analog. Okay, he's got, he's got digital and analog scales, or uh, thermometers. Uh, Jamel says, can I breed only scarlets to keep getting scarlet, or do I have to breed with a range? You can't breed scarlet to scarlet to keep getting scarlet. What does he need to do? I breed. <clears throat> I think it's right off the bat, but I can't remember right off the bat. I think scarlet to scarlet will produce uh, four different four different types, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. But don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, Brantley says, are the JMF meat makers actually as much larger as some claims indicate? <clears throat> the ones I've hatched have been, but I've never hatched JMF meat makers from Robbie Richard. I've got them from his partner farms. Mm -hmm. And two out of the three have been pretty big birds. The other wasn't so big. Right. Um, I actually have got uh, birds directly from Robbie or eggs directly from Robbie and also from one of his partner's farms and I noticed they were all about the same as far as size. Um, right now I'm working on going through picking out the largest of what I'm breeding right now and hopefully I can you know work on getting a little bit bigger line but I'm waiting on some I got some stuff coming from uh, Michael Rose and uh, so, something about a line that's not released yet. So I'm hoping that turns out to be halfway decent. Let's see, Thomas Greenaway says, why are my mail, oh, we already read that one. How am I first my did? Okay, guys, um, only post your questions once. Um, I'm trying to hit every single comment so we don't you know, skip over anything. Um, Robert Halverson says, why is that one up there again? There we go. Uh, to get jumbo celadons, would it be better to just breed the largest birds and eggs or introduce some jumbos, jumbo wilds? I'd introduce some big jumbo. Okay. 
Quail Mam says, at William Carl Foster, they are true sparklies from you. Earl Fee in Italian, I figured. <clears throat> Uh, Justin says, I have a question on the grid down scenario. Do you really need a incubate, incubator to hatch eggs? Hmm. Well, you got a broody hen. Or some pretty warm you weather. Or what? Or some pretty warm weather. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've seen a lot of people put a light bulb in a cooler and hatch them overseas where they didn't have yep. a whole lot. Yep, I have too. <laughs> but it if you're off grid, I really don't know what you can use. I had a friend ask me about a solar powder he can made once. I never could find one. Huh. That would be an idea. Although I don't know how uh, how you do it at night. I guess you'd have to have a battery backup. Yeah, yeah I don't. I had no idea. I looked online and I never could find one. Right. Uh, Katrina says, any color types linked with particular behaviors such as aggression or a docile nature? I know we are finding that some gene codes for multiple traits. I know that we are finding that for some gene codes for multiple traits. A lot of people say you're white, your English whites are aggressive birds. I have no issues with mine. Right. And I don't, really mine's all about the same in my opinion. I think it just depends how people have bred them or how selective they are about breeding. Sure. Some people better. At one time, this is probably 10 years ago, somebody trying to raise birds as docile pets. Uh, I don't think that ever come into anything. But right. You'll hear all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> are we getting a chirping noise? Is that on my end or your end? That's fine. Okay. My wife, we got a couple of here. Okay, no, no problem. I was just making sure it wasn't something going wrong on my end. <laughs> Alan says, is it normal for colored quail to be more aggressive pecking each other than regular wild? I think we pretty much just answered that one. Um, Jamel Campbell says, I have white-winged feral chicks. Will they breed true? If they're true white wings, they will. But like the picture Terry showed, that's what they should look like as a chick and an adult if they're true white wings. Let me see if I can bring that up real quick. The white wing, yep. which one was it? The pied? You just, right there. Yeah, yep. if you got white wing pharaoh, that's a white wing pharaoh chick, pure. The adult bird is a Tibet. You would have a wild type pattern here instead of a Tibetan pattern. If that's what you got, they should breed true. And if you want to test breed, if you took other wild type birds and bred to them, your first cross should have a little white on the chest and about three or four feathers on each wing will be white the first cross and then when you cross them together again they should look just like the birds in the picture right. then they should read 100 percent true but otherwise you've just got a selective touch hey uh, josie says hello from hawaii larry says using a digital and analog how to tell which is correct all giving different temp all giving different temps um I will I don't know how you would calibrate a, a, a digital. I know I know how I to calibrate the analog, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't answer. That. Sorry, Larry. Uh, L L J T Many Home said, "If you have mixed colors, do they get aggressive with, with each other?" I've had it. I've had issues with it. Races quail. I don't think so. I've heard people say they've had issues with the lighter birds getting picked on. I don't. I mix mine quite often when I'm doing different experiments. I don't have no problem. Uh, can Italians be bred together to breed true? Uh oh. <clears throat> One Italian, you got to cross Manchurians to Pharaoh. They get Italian. Okay. Italian to Italian, you get Italian, Manchurian, and wild side. Okay, Brad says, uh, can you breed Bob White with Jumbo Caternix? They've been bred together, but I believe they're said to be sterile. That's what I heard. The offspring are. Just what I heard. I don't know that from the screen. Right. Uh, Jay Cole says, is there any particular breed that is that is better brooders or are better brooders? I haven't had anything nope. go broody in mine. I, I see a lot of fawn 
your Italians, pearl feed, anything fawn based overseas. I've seen a lot of them. Okay. You know, they'll be pretty. I really don't know. I've never had that experience. Okay, uh, this is Tim. He said, I did ask a question. Why are my eggshells so thin on the eggs that my girls are laying? He already answered that. Oh, it's calcium, calcium issue. More. Yep. Or didn't you say a cal- lack of water, right? Yeah, some, I've seen it happen. If they run out of water, the water's getting plugged up. There's probably calcium in these feet, lack of. I check and make sure your feed's at least 3.5%. Three and a half to four and a half percent cows. Yep. Uh, Robert says I live in Minnesota and my birds are outside all winter in cages and did fine in minus twenty degree weather. Well, that's great. Hard bird. Uh, quail, ma'am. I have a copy. I have a covey of brown Tibetanish quail with a light fawn color, uh, with a tight fawn colored grout type banding is there a name for that color uh, i don't know if it'd be a they're brown might still be a grout eat perhaps brown. Hmm. almost have to be a, some kind of grout feed mix i would think Picking my brain here, I think. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Are you uh, selecting some winners there, William? Yep. Okay. Got a couple. Hope you got some more. We got a, you got a few more questions. Okay, everybody. Just in case you're just now joining us, um, William has graciously offered to give away five boxes, uh, thirty-six count. You said. Yeah. Thirty-six counts of mixed hatching eggs from his stock to the people who ask the most uh, engaging questions of the night. So we've got about 20 minutes left. So you guys got some time to get your questions in there and a good chance at winning a, uh, a box of eggs. So don't be shy, people. Need three more. Three more. Okay, Robert Halverson said, if I take my male fab fee, if I, I think it's mate, if I mate a male fab fee to a female growl fee, Will the colors be closer to the male or the female? Female. Okay, and why is that? <clears throat> Basically, you just take your fee out of the equation. You've got wild type, and your draw is either Rosetta or Tibet. Let's assume it's Tibet. Okay. Wild type Tibet will be Rosetta. So you're going to have that with the fee added on. That's how I always figure. Draw okay. fee crossed the most any of them is going to end up being some kind of a draw fee. Okay, Jeff says, do you sort out aggressive males? I don't, but if I see one that's real aggressive, he comes out, but I don't sit through a whole cage of birds. Right. See which kind of act and aggressive. You know, I like an aggressive bird as far as mate. I like to have fertile eggs. So. Right. Yeah, I, I separate all my birds, the males, the hens from the roosters, when they're you know, about around three weeks old, and then I grow them up, the roos, uh, select the biggest ones or the ones that I want and the rest of them all go out in the meat pen. All right, Kevin says, I have some rosettas that seem jumpy. Hens killing the roos, etc. Is this a common trait? The Italians are very calm. No, not very common in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Outdoors <laughs> with Tim says, will females become broody and sit on their own eggs? I've seen it, but it's not very common. Right. Okay, Nikki says, is it possible to recycle? Uh, Go ahead and and say that again, William. No, I I just say out out in an aviary, not in a cage. I've never seen it happen, but you see it happen in an aviary. All right. Okay, Nikki says, is it possible to recycle your quail in much the same way that you can chickens by doing a dark lockdown? I guess I don't understand that. I don't either. I don't know what recycle means. I may maybe recycle, recycle the egg laying. Probably start over. Yeah, I say recycle. absolutely. A lot of people. That's why they'll say they give them a break in the winter. A lot of people won't put extra lights on them. Right. And then when the light changes, they'll start to molt. They'll go through a molt for a few weeks. Yeah. yeah that's 
pretty much the same, yeah, the answer is yes. Okay, Nick says, when breeding quail, are there more dominant features in males or females that come through in the offspring? Good question, Nick. Uh, that I don't know, to be honest. I, If I had a certain color male I wanted to reproduce, I'd use the male versus the hen, you know, for the most part to reproduce. Yeah, I could, scientifically, I, yeah. I don't I've, know I've always that. heard, and I don't know if it's true, but I've always heard that if the male has the trait that you want, you want to use that male basically because he can breed a bunch of hens, you know, instead of having one hen that's just delivering a few eggs for you. Yep, I don't know really if that's feasible or true or if it's just an easier guess, you know, for somebody that's trying to that's I'd I'd rather use a male and that's why. So that may just be the easiest way for me to be honest. Sure. I don't know what would be better. Yep. All right, Brenton says, I'm going to try to breed true different quail colors, uh, e.g. silver. How many generations do you think it will take uh, breed offspring back to adults uh, for Brisbane Quail Australia? Well, it depends what all you got mixed in your silver, Brent. I don't know, to be honest. <clears throat> you may get them the first cross. Or you'll get hetero probably, and then you have to cross them together to get home up. Mm -hmm. So your silver will be all white. Depends what all you got mixed in. Okay, Nathan says hello from Northwest Alabama. Uh, Nicole says, I just got white winged pharaohs. When I hatch out their eggs, will I get a bunch of different types? If they're white winged pharaohs, you should get white winged pharaohs. The word being if i don't know right. where you got them or what they are so yeah. no idea how to answer that but back to brent no i don't believe i've ever seen silver in uh australia brent maybe it's blue i've seen blue there but i don't know if i've seen silver okay uh let's see salvador says hi terry and everyone from puerto rico hello and welcome to the show Pete says, what is the longest you can store quail eggs to hatch? Oh, I never stored mine over a couple weeks, but I've hatched small percentage of eggs that was six weeks old, over six weeks old, 10% yep. accurate. But I really don't know. I like to set mine every week. Sometimes I'll keep them two weeks before I set them. I started this year, actually, probably back in November. Um, being in Florida, it's kind of hard for me to keep my eggs, you know, between 50 and 70 degrees. I started putting them all in the refrigerator. Haven't noticed yep. any issues with my uh, hatch rates. Yeah. For a week or two weeks or how long, Terry? I usually I usually don't go more than 10 days, but for about a week. Uh, yeah. What I try to. Yeah. No. When I when I first started collecting eggs I was always told yeah you want the refrigerator's too cold you know you can't do it but I have a little you dorm fridge I turn the temperature all the way down in it or all the way up in it actually and it works just fine uh, why did it take 37 weeks to lay an egg <laughs> could be uh, slow things. maturity feed light could be all kinds of issues really I mean it could be anything could be getting scared Right. Uh, April says, is there a huge behavior change in each color of breed or just a few? I don't really notice a whole lot of difference in any of mine. Really, for the most part, I think what I have is pretty docile. And I've had a few birds that's pretty aggressive, but for the most part, I think pretty docile birds. And I've never selectively bred that into them or anything. Right. More breed for color or size. Okay, Quail Ma'am says, I have a golden Manchurian male that was born with one wing. Have you ever gotten a quail with one or no wings? I haven't. I know a guy's got one with four legs. I got one with four legs at one time. I know another guy that got one too. Um, I don't know, and he actually raised his up. I called mine right after I took the picture. But uh, now he actually raised his up and he says it's doing fine. Let's see, April says, is there a huge change? I think we already answered that. 
Is there a huge change in behavior in different colors or just a few? Yeah, I've never noticed. Some people would probably say there is, but I never had the big issue here. <laughs> I think a lot of it, if you brood them together, I don't think you have near the problems as what you do if you separate them and you put them together. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you, I've heard in the past, brood all your birds together. But well, you can't always do that if you've got a recessive. I think that's how you get a lot of mixed birds out there. A lot of people's offering mixed birds because they raise them together in the brood. Right. And you may have one that come from over here and they didn't know it. They put it in the wrong group. But if you got lines that hatch true, 99.9% .9 safe to brood them together. Right. Now look at Kai. He'll brood a thousand birds or more together. That's unbelievable, I think. I know. When I saw those pictures that he sent. Oh, man. Oh, he wow. sent me how something. How do you do that? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, John says, have you ever left a cage unlatched? Ha ha, I lost 10 birds today. Yeah, more yeah. than once. I've done the same thing. But luckily my birds are indoors. They, don't, they can't get outside unless I left the back door open. Uh, let's see, Kevin says, I have done the JMF and they are big. Uh, let's see, Tina Price says, such good questions, everyone. Thank you all for the good information. I have 20 jumbo brown and two jumbo whites. Which do you prefer for meat birds? The white seem bigger. They taste the same to me, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a preference, but I know H.B. Murray and he, or he prefers the whites, and I've never really seen anybody else say whether they prefer the white or a brown as far as meat and taste. I've heard him claim he likes the whites better than the browns from tape. Uh, Jeff says, what would you, what would I get from a jumbo and Italian cross? Jumbo. I guess your jumbo is a jumbo wild type or a jumbo pharaoh. Mm -hmm. You can get wild type or Italians. You know, that's, jumbo's a class. A lot of people say a jumbo. And I just presume that's a wild type. Jumbo's a weight class. You've got a Bantam weight class, standard weight class, and a Jumbo weight class. There should be something after that word Jumbo for a variety as far as collar. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask for Jumbos. I'm like, what kind of Jumbo do you want? You know, 80% of my birds are Jumbo. Right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this question up here. Renee says, I'm running a test. I'm running one of my... Why can't I read that? I'm test running one of my two incubators that will make with two bottles of water and a tray of water. It got to 75 on... I, I, humidity, H -Y. I guess. I guess humidity. And just put 24 chicken eggs in with no water. What should the HYD be at to start? I believe she's talking about the humidity. Humidity. I have no idea. You're the expert on that. I think it's. Well, I do. I do a dry hatch. Yeah, I do a dry hatch, just because the humidity down here is, you know, pretty high most of the time. Right. I would say anywhere 40, between 35 and 50 percent, you'll be fine. I think most of them say 45 to 55. Man. Yeah. I don't really. I don't even check mine until. I don't either. I I haven't looked at a a hygrometer and who knows how long. Uh, oh, there are kerosene incubators. Thanks, Kevin. I did not know that. Okay, Nick says, if I breed a silver rooster with a Tibetan hen, what are some of the outcomes I can expect in their offspring? No idea. I presume your silver is going to be based on something else. It's not going to be a home of silver because they'd be pure white. Right. Well, I don't know why this... There it goes. I couldn't figure out how to get the cap off of my oh, my bullet pen. <laughs> you got uh, some wrote down? No, I was hoping you were. I, did, I This is the first I, I just found a pen. All right, I got a couple wrote down. Okay, I, hope, I don't know how many more questions we got, but we'll keep on going. Uh, okay, we got four minutes to eight o'clock, so let's kind of rush through these. There are, are there some official list of colors? 
um, Google there's some the genetics page there's some there's a lot of scientific studies on different colors some of it's good information some of it's wrong right you got to figure ahead what I'm insuring is English wise wild type Tibetan I was thinking there's five but I know there's four that's the first birds we had in the US then I think it was in the 80s they brought the range or the routes in and that gave us quite a few more and then what was it 12 13 I, I forget how many years ago it was that Robbie imported the SSC you know we didn't have a lot of different birds we don't have four or five different kinds of birds in this country for years and years mm -hmm. okay where are we here uh, J. Cole says how long after breeding to one color pair and then change male should I wait to expect new genetics to be in effect they should after the first week I always wait two weeks but if you want to be a hundred percent certain you better wait 28 days okay that was a good question uh, what's the best way to get the heaviest bird selective breeding heaviest to heaviest or try a little bit of everything you got hope for a great hybridization effect I found that the, right. I know somebody that bred a bantam to another bird trying to get a standard they got a bird that was over a pound so wow. that that cross went the opposite way but they was quite happy right. uh, Nicole says what type are the biggest egg layers a lot of people's going to tell you a wild type but I'd say an Italian Okay. Some people don't have very big Italians, but your larger Italians will be, in my opinion. Phyllis says, my quail hasn't been laying all winter. When will they start laying, or do I need to start over? Oh, should start to get more light now. They really should start laying it. Yeah. You've got a lot of you know, calcium in your you got a good feed. And nothing's scaring them. Something may be scaring them. Start on them. I did, uh, I had some hens that were laying pretty regular. All I did was move them from one cage to another so I could pressure wash their cage and I put them back in the cage and they stopped laying. I mean, they're back to laying now, but they, they stopped for like two weeks. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I pulled a bird out to look and put it back in and had that cage put before. Yep. Uh, Jamel says, I have one white chick. What can I breed it with to get more or should I buy more eggs from whites? Oh, I'd probably buy more if you've only got one. Okay. I'd hope it's a white bird and not a white chick. If it's a white chick, it can collar into anything. Okay. Or not um, anything. I am going to start pushing through these a little bit quicker. We are one minute to eight right now. And I'm just going to take the questions. I'm skipping over all the uh, comments. So, uh, Quail Ma'am says, what would you get if you bred a Graufee Sparkly to a heterozygous black quail? And what about a homozygous black? No idea. You're probably going to almost still keep your black. You may have a little gray in there. We're going to have. We're going to keep your black probably. You know, have sparkly and black, and some grass, three different kinds, I'd say. But I don't know. I've never tried. Okay. Uh, Connie said, "Sorry, I just got here. You may have covered this. What percent protein do you feed your egg-producing hens? Can I get away with feeding a 16% layer feed? Thanks, Larry." Yeah, I believe so. I, I feed 17, 16 is sufficient. If you, I'd want three and a half percent calcium at least. Yeah. Yeah, I do feed a uh, 16%. Um, every once in a while, I'll throw in a little bit of 24% that I have for my chicks, just to make sure that you know they're getting enough. Um, what is the best Caternix to raise overall? Wild type, yeah, I'd yeah. say. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Italian. Have you ever, but Quail Ma'am says, have you ever had any quail with curled feathers or beards? Curled and tufts. It's on the side like a beard. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Jamel wants to know, what is the best waters for quail in your opinion? What do you think? I like the troughs on the outside myself. Yeah, I use the, uh, the cups, you know, the regular cups with a little yellow thing in there, but seems like especially when it gets hot down here my birds like to sit on them and then they all the water flushes out into the pans um, I've, I've got them and the nipples and the troughs and I like the troughs yeah. 
I use nipples on my outside cages, but the inside stuff I use the cups. I might try troughs here. I'm going to try to move them outside the cage, the waters, just to keep oh, the birds That's going to be better. You'll like that, I think. Yeah. Uh, Manny Hot. Manny Hot. Hope I got your name right. My quail is laying pale eggs before they were brown. Is It's a Caternix japonica. What can I do to make her lay brown eggs again? <laughs> Ran out of ink. Calcium. Run out of ink, calcium, or they run out of water. <laughs> At some point. Uh, Sarah says, any difference in taste or texture when you eat different colors? I haven't noticed that. Uh, Bruce says, what would you recommend for a newbie to start with? Or are they all basically the same? I'd recommend wild type James yeah. Marie meat makers or the Browns that Kansas City well calls them Browns. Uh, Southwest Camper calls them their Browns. I either them Browns or they're at meat makers. HP's got the meat makers. Any of them three is where I'd go with. Just start. All right. Quail Man says uh, if I have a grouchy sparkly roux and no hens but want to replicate that color. What color hen should I breed my male to in order to throw the most grouchy sparklies? Tibetan or Rosetta, if you don't have any other grouchies, then just get a percentage. Um, how much eggs do you usually get? How much eggs do you usually get? I don't know. I don't know on that one. I'd say 80% of my birds lay an egg every day. I mean, if I go out there, I should have 80%. Too many some days and not enough some days. <laughs> right. Uh, Dave Crowley says, do you think there's a need for a solar-powered incubator? I'm looking for a new project and could build one for fun. I would gladly share the design when successful. I think it would be interesting. I mean, I've always loved solar power. I've got solar power on my boat, out in my shop. Uh, yeah, I think it would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay, we've already answered this one, but Lily says, have you ever noticed any broody behaviors in your quail? Have you noticed the behavior to be specific to any lines? Not in mine, but I've seen a lot of Italians overseas that's went for you. Pearl fees, farm-based birds, same as an Italian. Right. Well, ma'am says, have you ever been able to hatch a double yoker? Terry has. Terry has. I have. <laughs> uh, LJT wants to know what your favorite color is. Blue. I know. I don't know what my favorite color bird is. Blue's my favorite color, but right. I don't really have a favorite color bird. I, I've got some crosses. I, there's not really a name for it, so I, I can't really say what the name. Okay. Maybe name it one. Day. Piggy Boy says, can feeding your quail a special food affect the vibrance of their colors? I know that certain fish can get better color if you feed special food. <laughs> no idea, but that's a good question. It may. I, the lighting. Well, I haven't noticed this in my quail, um, but I have noticed it in my chickens. Uh, when I feed my chickens fermented feed, there is like their plumage was a lot more... I don't... I don't really think vibrant was the word. It had like a um, uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? It, it it affected their color. I mean, they were really brilliant. They had this like almost like a trans not translucent, but uh, what's the word? I'm not sure. Yeah, it was, but I haven't never noticed it in my quail feeding them the uh, the fermented. But I know that I did to help the chickens. I've heard the red light versus a white light makes a difference on some, but really? I don't know how true that is. I've never tested Uh What can I do to improve the color of my quail, my eggs quail? Color quail eggs, maybe? Selective breed, I guess, yeah. if that's what you want, specific color. Uh, Lily Bailey says, do you have any birds with unusual tufts or feathers? I believe the gene is called the feather tuft and typically occurs around the beak. Hmm. I'm getting a few from one group, and actually they come from Diana David, is Genesis quality quail. Then I've got some curlies that are coming from another group that's 
something new. Hopefully, it'll be offered here midsummer and later in the fall right. as a collection. Okay, Lily says, "Have you ever have you seen the Kippen Jungle Japanese Quail Calculator?" I have not. I think I have. Uh, it's just it's got a few of the older collars on there. None, none of the newer stuff that I've seen. Uh, Tina says, I hear a lot about light. What kind of light is the best? In a brooder, I like red. I use both, but I like the red better. Okay. And I just use a regular house like my barn. I don't use nothing, just a 60 watt bulb. Right. I don't use nothing fancy. Uh, Jamel says, I have red and blue grow lights for plants. Will they work for quail? Iridescent. Thank you, Verna. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Here, <laughs> <coughs> this. Um, yeah, I don't know about the blue, blue, but I'd say the red or the blue. I mean, for the laying, maybe, but I don't know. What do you think? I've never used either. I just use standard incandescent bulbs. I can't believe I couldn't think of iridescent. Uh, what is the largest egg your birds have ever laid, and what is your record for number of yolks in one shell? Hmm. I've had a triple yolk. I've never had And I really don't want to put that. I've had eggs over 20 grams, but I think 24 was the largest I ever weighed. Some of them were huge, but I never even bothered weighing them. And that was a celadon, actually. Okay, it looks like we are down to the last question, and Tracy wants to know, are there any good Caternix books out there? No good ones that I know of. I've heard good. somebody's writing a book, but I haven't seen it published yet. Okay. All right, that brings us down to the bottom of all the questions. Um, William, if you want to go ahead and announce the winners of the, uh, the eggs, but first off, I want to say something. Um, if if William calls your name, you guys need to contact me at Terry at CaternixCorner.com with your shipping information, and I can forward that on to William. Or William, do you have an email that you want them to contact you directly? Or it's William Carl Foster at Gmail, or okay. they can message me on Facebook. It don't matter either way. Okay. Yeah. So we either contact either me or uh, William, and we will get the shipping information that he needs to get your eggs sent out. So go ahead with the winners there, William. I got uh, Nick Dora, Quail Ma'am, Outdoors Mr. Tim, Jay Cole, and Connie Blasingham. What was the last one? Connie Blasingham. Hope I pronounced that right. Okay, and the winner of the uh, Caternix Corner Cup, let me pull that up so you guys can see it, is Brad Davis. So Brad, um, to get your tumbler, you need to uh, email me. Verna put the email address up there on the uh, chat room. So uh, uh, email me and your shipping information and we will get that out right away. Um, same with the uh, the winners of all the eggs and congratulations to all the winners um, I envy you you guys are getting some good eggs <laughs> um, William is there anything else you want to say before we uh, close this one out tonight I appreciate you having me on here Terry yeah, absolutely check out the black current show page yeah it's definitely free guys. last month we gave away a $50 you know I pay pound somebody 50 bucks we just randomly chose a name for anyone that entered so cool all you gotta do is Every month, I hope to do that. I got a lot of sponsors that donate. Kansas City Quail, HP Murray, Gopher Ridge Quail, Southwest Kingsburg, Mike Rose, Essex County Quail in Canada, uh, Kai Pepler in Germany, Brenton Cox, Adam Greens at Stony Brook Quail, and Monica Endell. I forget what hers is, but she's overseas as well in Sweden. A lot of people donate and stuff, so I think it's a pretty neat thing. I just like seeing the pictures. Sure. 
Okay guys, um, it's after eight, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the plug on this one. Again, congratulations to the winners. Again, thank you, William. I really appreciate you coming on the show for a second time. Um, join Thanks, us, too. guys, next week, um, March 23rd. Um, we're gonna have Marius and Hendriette Bullion. They are in South Africa, and they are gonna come on the show and talk to us a little bit about what it's like raising quail in their location in, in South Africa. Um, he's got a pretty neat little setup out back and uh, I think it's gonna be really interesting. So join us then. Um, don't forget to check out uh, William's site. It's, uh, what's the name of the Facebook group page, William? For the show? Worldwide Concern. Worldwide Concern. Worldwide Online Show. Worldwide Coturnix Online Show Facebook group page, and also check out uh, Coturnix Corner Facebook group page. So everybody have a wonderful night. Again, congratulations to the winners, and we'll see you guys all next week.